Competitive Pokemon is a game that never sits still. It's always changing. Same goes for the Pokemon themselves. Some Pokemon come and go, and some don't. But today we are here to talk about a question that a lot of people think they know the answer to. If a Pokemon is popular, does that mean it's good? On the surface, the answer is obvious, of course. Why would people be using stuff if it's terrible? But the answer is a lot deeper than you might think. Let's take Fluttermane for example. Fluttermane has been dominating all of the formats it's been allowed in, but just because it's popular, is it the best Pokemon in the game? Kind of. Since fairy types have reigned supreme since their debut, we already know that it's a fantastic offensive type, but its secondary type, Ghost, isn't that prominent offensively. A lot of Ghost types are hard hitting but frail. In exchange for that, they excel at hitting opponents for neutral damage. Fluttermane was always doing insane damage with its insane offensive stats. So the player base needed to find a way to defeat it, so that's what they did. Palafin was known to be one of the strongest Pokemon due to its base stat total being the fourth highest in the game. Since it's a physical attacker and Fluttermane is weak to physical attacks, Palafin started to rise in usage. Luckily for Palafin, its value against Fluttermane wasn't the only reason it became popular. A lot of the time, Pokemon rise in usage to beat other popular Pokemon. So usage doesn't necessarily mean a Pokemon is good. So really, a Pokemon's strength is reliant on those around it. Some Pokemon are so good that I like to call them the initial threats in a format. Fluttermane, Palafin, Iron Bundle, and Iron Hands fall in this category. In order to defeat these powerful threats, players start to use counterplay. Palafin beats Fluttermane, Iron Hands beats Palafin, Annihilate beats Bundle, and Great Tusk beats Iron Hands. I like to call these Pokemon initial counterplay. So then the metagame begins to shift again. Since players are starting to use physical attackers, Arcanine, Dragonite, and Bulky Fluttermane start to rise in usage. This way, physical attackers have a tougher time breaking through these walls. I call these anti-counterplay. That's the basic idea of the Pokemon metagame. In this case, usage does make Pokemon good, but eventually it all comes full circle. Once counters to the original metagame fall in usage, the initial threats return with new tricks to beat the things that once beat them. That's one of the reasons Bulky Fluttermane is used a lot right now, opposed to Series 2 when players opted for a faster and hard-hitting Fluttermane. Players now realize the value in your Fluttermane not dying to Palafin Jet Punch, so this old ghost with new tricks can do some damage back to your Palafin. And if they have Thunderbolt, Fluttermane can even beat its own counterplay. So if players only use Palafin to beat Fluttermane, which they don't, then Palafin would drop drastically in usage, even though it's strong and was a good counter to Fluttermane. That being said, players won't use Pokemon just because they like them. Players will use Pokemon that are good all around Pokemon to start off each series. People won't start off the format with counterplay because we don't know for sure what's good and what's not. So to answer the question, yes, usage does determine what Pokemon could be good and how good an existing Pokemon is. If a Pokemon is popular, it's because it's good. But eventually, counterplay could be developed, leading into that Pokemon falling in usage, much like Murkrow. But that doesn't make Murkrow bad. Thank you all for watching.